I think I started fooling around with accents when I was a kid, but real proper voice work. I started when I was 24 and I was doing my first show at Melbourne Theatre Company and uh, I finished the show and one of the other actors in the show said to me, what are you going to do now? And I said, I'm going to go back to being a waitress and she said, no, you're not. You're going to come and meet my producer at Vision Australia um, and narrate audiobooks. And so that's how I started when I was 24. I think the inconsistency of it is it's double-sided. So it's a challenge because one doesn't know when the next job is coming, but it's also exciting because one doesn't know when the next job is coming. So it's challenging to, um, to budget, but I think the most challenging job I had was where I was doing a commercial which was never aired, unsurprisingly, for Apples, uh, and the writer slash client slash man in the room said, can you build the read, the read for apples, family friendly apples, can you build the read to make it sound like you're having an orgasm? Yep, that was challenging. I love that I never know what I'm really walking into, um, that, you know, I get a um, I get a little call from you and I get an email and then I may, you know, know what the product is. Um, but it could be a brand new studio, so I love meeting new people. I love the fact that the script could be anything and everything. Um, sometimes it gets really playful um, and then obviously sometimes, you know, it's quite straight down the line and serious. So I love the, the unknown um, of the, uh, yeah, the unknown of the jobs. A fun one that we did for a porto was where we had to, myself and the other voice artist across from me, so we were facing each other. Because it's rare these days that you do jobs with other actors. So this, it's really pleasant when you do. And this particular gent and I had to stand across from each other. We both had a microphone in front of us. And uh, we had to pretend that we were in bed pashing. So to make the kissing sounds, we had to kiss the back of our own hand. And he had a wedding ring on. And so... We were both doing, you know, a bit of the mwah, mwah, and making kissing sounds, which was quite awkward, and looking at each other at the same time. And then I saw the wedding ring on his finger and uh, was quite embarrassed and it was quite awkward. But it was so much fun and it sounded fantastic when we listened to the final product. It sounded really great. It's important to have fun when you're at a job because that translates, I think, into the read, d depending, obviously, you know, on the type of read and what they want. But fun is really important. I was first and foremost an actor, um, then I obviously had the skills of transformation into character, but I think I also have a really great ability to get the underlying sense of a script, so it's not just what's written on the page, but the tone of it. I think I pick up tone very quickly, um, and not even just oral tone, but sort of the implicit sense of what the script is, so you know, if it's... Um, uh, you know, it's more of a sort of sexy, gentle read, then I can infuse that because my imagination gets involved a lot and I often find that I'll close my eyes while I'm doing a read to get sort of, you know, images or feelings that come to me. It's quite a visceral experience. The one that always jumps to mind is I did a read for Kotex tampons. It was my first tampon commercial, um, but it was... It was very different from what I'd been doing. I'd been doing a lot of very sort of fun, warm, young, bubbly radio reads, retail kind of reads. And then this particular job that I did with Audio Brian, um, I think Brad took a real risk on me because I hadn't done this type of, because it was quite a sensual, um, downplayed, I liken it to like a magnum ice cream kind of read. So a little bit sexy, but... Um, yeah, again, that sense of the implicit story of, of what's going on. And I was really impressed with the read that I did because I'd never done anything like that before. And it was such a nice experience because the writers were in the room and they had the storyboard um, and it was to be an animation and it was um, quite a magical kind of animation. So it was a, um, an animated fairy and she was in the trees and the vines and she had wings and it was quite beautiful. And so they showed me all the storyboards and so then it was almost like I was able to take on the character of that fairy and then it was a beautiful sort of soft magical read which was really different than anything I'd done and I was really proud of myself for being able to shift like that and then that started to change the type of work 
that I was getting. Um, so that was a really enjoyable process. Yeah, of course. Not as much, obviously not as much as I used to. And I'm pretty good. Like with the audiobook narration, it was such a great um, uh, kind of, I guess, beginning for me because we would do four hour sessions and I got very good at sight reading and not making mistakes. So I was one of the the fastest readers and one of the readers who made the least mistakes, so we didn't have to keep going back. So, of course I do, I'm human, but um, not very often, I have to say. I'm with Kathy Evans Voice Management because in 2009, I um, was doing a theatre show in Melbourne with um, Rebecca Stone, who's also with Kathy Evans Voice Management, and Rebecca had told me about Kath, and I had approached Kath when she was with was working with um, another agency. And I got a really lovely email from her years ago when she was at this agency saying, we think your demo is great, but you know, you need to do a, you know, you need to just kind of grow a little more, but you know, we're not shutting any doors. Please keep coming back to us. And I was so impressed by her openness and faith that I would continue to grow as an artist and she didn't know me at all. And then when I approached her then in 2009, a few years later, um, I think that she may have remembered who I was and called me straight away and we had a really great connection. It was very easy and we were on the same page and I love the fact that Kathy's maintained a small base of artists and hasn't blown out quite big, which she easily could have because she's one of the best in the industry. And I constantly am told when I go to jobs how much they respect Kathy and, um, and the company and how hard they work and that she is one of the top managers slash agents in the industry. So I'm very proud to be with Kathy Evans Voice Management, very grateful. From speaking with other friends who are with other agencies and bigger agencies um, that have more people on their books, I think with Kath there's definitely a sense of, I know that I am the only type of voice um, and personality on her books and therefore there's less competition, there's enough competition in the industry, so who wants competition within your own agency? I feel like there's a sense of we are, it's a business relationship, but there's also a deep respect um, and a friendship between us, which is, you know, it's warm and it makes me feel, yeah, it makes me feel supported, which is so important in such an unstable industry. I have several. So we do uh, different warm-ups to, to release muscles and, and warm up the muscles and the articulators in different parts of the mouth. So one of my favourites is this one. It's called the uh, toothbrush. So we just do a bit of a... That's a good one. Blowing through the lips. Cat's bum is also a great one. Is also a really good one. Uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? I'm not even warm. So that's a little array of some of the ones that we do. Then we do, oh, this is a good one too. Releasing the jaw. <laughs> that's why I had about five words come to me, but I'm going to go playful. <laughs> 